buying the illusion. Yes, she is. Yeah, that's cool. Well, I started when I was eight years old, um, so that's a long time ago. Uh, it was actually 1969 when I got my first dummy, watch it, sorry, uh, and um, practiced really hard, and not until I was 12 years old did someone hand me a $20 bill uh, and pay me for a show, and that's real, I realized I had something going there. Yeah, she didn't cut lawns, you did the ventriloquism. That's right, I did, yeah. We started off doing birthday parties and stuff, graduated to corporate and stage shows and all that. Here I am at the Lamoille County Field Days. Hooray! Yeah, that's right, good deal. I have had a blast. Yeah, it's a good time. The people are so nice. They are very, very nice. We've had a great time with everybody. Food's been great. Other acts have been great. Been making new friends that way. But really, just all, all the way around, everybody's so nice. And just uh, audiences have been so much fun having a good time. Well, the hardest part of ventriloquism is creating that illusion of two separate lives. And, uh, and I'll be honest with you, a fair is the hardest place to do it. Um, the easiest place is in a theater when you can kind of set things up. But here I'm moving fast, doing the show fast. Yeah. But I think people buy it and they, they like each individual character. The hardest part is putting it all together, you know? One of the things you may know is like, I'm pretty realistic. This is a, a, this is a tool of my trade, okay? But while, while Floyd is out, he is constantly looking around. He's looking between you and I. And uh, he's involved in the conversation even though he's not vocal. So that's the whole thing. It's creating the illusion. The best compliment I could have had was one of your colleagues with a, a video camera and an independent mic was interviewing me yesterday, and every time my puppet talked, he kept putting the mic in front of the puppet's mouth. Carved in the USA, I was whittled in the USA. <laughs> Who is my favorite ventriloquist? That's a hard one, isn't it? No, it's not hard at all. No, no. My favorite ventriloquist is actually Edgar Bergen. So Edgar Bergen is the guy that had Charlie McCarthy with the top hat and the monocle. Everybody still, even you know, uh, younger people know who he is. Edgar Bergen created an amazing um, uh, personality for each of his dummies. And um, even though, like, so Floyd, can I get technical for a minute? Sure. Floyd uh, only has one animation besides the fact that his head turns, just his mouth moves. So there are times when ventriloquist dummies have up, uh, eyes that open and close, move back and forth, even noses that wiggle, ears that flap. Floyd's very basic. Well, so is Charlie McCarthy. And the, the point is, is that you create a life in a, in a puppet, and that's what Edgar Bergen did. He was a, a star on radio, which is kind of weird for ventriloquism. Uh, he went on to do motion pictures, but in the end, he's the one that created modern ventriloquism. A, B, C, D, E, F, You know what? The cool thing about, about ventriloquism is that, you know, when I first started, it was quote-unquote a dying art. Now we're seeing it all the time now. Uh, we're seeing it on places like America's Got Talent, but more places uh, in in entertainment than ever before. So I am thrilled to be here at the Field Days representing ventriloquism and having fun with all the folks here. It's been great. Yeah, me too. Having a good time.